When the last sword is drawn, movie review. So this is a Japanese movie. I believe it came out in 2002. And uh, yeah, I saw it when I was living in Japan. A student of mine recommended it to me. I, I was teaching English in Japan, so this was a Japanese student of mine. Uh, in fact, he recommended it quite strongly. He had been going around telling a number of teachers that this was his favorite movie of all time and everyone had to see it. And we all said, yeah, 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 whatever. But then one day he actually showed up with a DVD and was kind of thrusting it at our faces. Um, and the DVD, it was a Japanese movie, but it had English subtitles and uh, it was historical. I mean, it was a historical timepiece. I'll, I'll get into the historical accuracy of it later. And I'm a big history geek, so I, I said, yeah, all right. I'll check it out. So, yeah, I didn't actually enjoy the movie, but I found the history behind it interesting. I, I guess I'll start with the movie first of all. Uh, the movie is kind of around the time period of the fall of the Tokugawa Shogunate. So, kind of, you know, the whole, like, Last Samurai period. Remember that Last Samurai movie with Tom Cruise? Um, of course, this being a Japanese movie, it's getting a little bit more into the intricateness of the politics of this period. Uh, Tom Cruise's movie was just vastly oversimplifying it. Uh, this movie is a buddy movie, uh, kind of an odd couple uh, movie. And I think if this had been like a Hollywood movie, they would have played it for laughs a bit more, you know, like kind of lethal weapon type movie where there's kind of two odd couples and they, it, two, two people who have different personality and it, re it results in kind of comic hijinks. Um, but here this movie tends to take itself a lot more seriously. Now, the narrative structure of this movie is a bit of a mess. The whole framing structure of it uh, is they're sitting around reminiscing. So the whole framing structure is a flashback. But then it turns out that there's a backstory to the story, so that there are flashbacks within the flashbacks. Now, it's, the good news is, is it's not as confusing as it sounds. Like, I was never confused about what was happening. I was able to keep everything straight. Um, but the bad news is that it does kind of kill the for forward momentum of the story and makes this kind of pretty boring to watch. Um, and then the sappiness. Uh, it's just really sappy. I've been complaining about sappiness in a number of the Japanese films I've reviewed and at some point I may just have to suck it up and just accept that this is part of Japanese film culture and if I'm going to watch a lot of Japanese films I can't complain about it uh, in every film but yeah I just I don't like the sappiness and they really pile on the tear jerking scenes in this movie. Uh, and it's just so long. It's two hours and ten minutes, and it feels longer. Uh, and the last half hour or so is just one long, drawn out, drawn out death scene for the main character. I was re it really tried my patience. Uh, the last forty minutes of this movie, I just so badly wanted to fast forward through it. I didn't. Uh, I sat through the whole movie, but I really wanted to. Now, talking about the history behind this movie, I did not know any of the history before I went into this. But the internet is a wonderful thing, and a lot of this information is available on Wikipedia. So it turns out that this was a lot more historically accurate than I thought it was. Uh, I, I didn't think it was very historically accurate at all, but at least one of the characters in this movie, Saito Hajime, uh, was an actual real person. Uh, and the Shinsengumi, which is the samurai police force uh, that takes up kind of the, the, is a, the center of this movie's plot, 
was actually really historical as well. And you know, you can read on Wikipedia about Shin Sengumi or Saito Hajime. I'm not going to bore you with it here. But uh, once I found out that all of that was historical, now I don't, I don't think the story in this movie was all historical. I'm not sure. Like, there are two samurai in this movie who are main characters. I'm not sure the other guy was a historical person, but at the very least, a lot of the characters in this movie were real historical people, and the Shin Singumi was a real historical thing. So when I found that out, that did kind of increase my interest in the movie. In fact, I kind of wish I had known that before I watched it. Uh, maybe that would have made this movie more interesting for me. Um, so as it is, uh, if you're a history geek, Possibly this is worth checking out for the history. Uh, I'm not sure I could really recommend it as on its own merits as a film, though. I don't know. Uh, maybe worth checking out if you ever find it.